You're listening to Mountain Heartbeat with Joan Rosa Hopkins, proclaiming the gospel through word and through song. Thank you for joining us this week on Mountain Heartbeat. I'm Joe Hopkins. This week, Rosa concludes her interview with Jennifer Christie. Thank you very much for joining us this week. And for those of you that have been listening to the last couple weeks and Rosa's interview with Jen Christie, we thank you. And I certainly hope you enjoy the conclusion of it. <laughs> of the magnitude of what God can do. It's overwhelming. It makes me think of Genesis 50, 20, where what was intended for evil, God will use for good. And the other thing is that Jesus, through your and Jeff's decision, is showing unconditional love because mm-hmm. so many people see that as a rape baby or they'll say that that's the reason why people, because I'll just share a quick statistic. The uh, babies that are aborted through rape and incest are 1% of all abortions that are committed. And so because pro-life people don't believe that any babies should be murdered, we just don't believe that a lot of times the other the up the opposition will say that well what about rape or incest Mm -hmm. and that's one percent and they'll use that to justify the 99 percent but here you're showing that here's one of these little one percents and he's a miracle and he's a blessing and that god loves him he's not a rape baby there's no such thing as that um He's, he didn't commit any any wrong, and he's your baby. And I'll, I'll let you say what it is yeah. that you say when, <laughs> when people say that. What is your response? I actually wrote um, I wrote a response that um, someone from Live Action News wants to write in an article, so I actually took it down. But I wrote it in response to a comment um, that someone had said about, you know, I can't believe you're, you know, raising a rape baby because inevitably, no matter where the article is published, um, on what site, if there are five, you know, 50 comments or 50,000, there will be a good number that will be like, well, I'd never raise a rape baby or, you know, thanks for raising, you know, letting a rape baby run around in public or something like that. And like, I, (laughs) and, um, and it always, it always, it always gets to me. I mean, for obvious reasons, but just to think about, you know, if, if you're, I've never heard someone say, to a woman like, you know, so you're having your husband's baby or something. It, it doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. It's always, you know, well, your baby or, you know, you're having a baby or, but for some reason in this instance, it's always like the rape baby, the rapist baby. And the woman's part in that, you know, the fact that it's her DNA also just completely is, is ignored. And so I wrote the rapist baby. How about my baby? Cause that's what he is. He's part of me. And my blue eyes that have every old lady in town stopping us in the grocery store and giving him little treats and kisses because he looks just like an angel. But not only mine. He's part of the father who's raising him and loving him and takes him to the library in the park and vanquishes bedtime monsters with silly songs and sock puppet shows. He's part of his big brothers who put together toddler bikes and tirelessly toss the ball outside with enthusiasm. And his sister who insists he dressed like a Ralph Lauren ad so she can parade him around her friends at work and tell customers he's hers. I don't love this. He's his grandparents and godparents and aunts and uncles and our friends and church family and people around the world who love him yet have never laid eyes on him. That's who he is and that's who he'll be, fearfully and wonderfully made and created in the image of God. We've no fear of what the future holds. We know who holds the future. Thank you for your comments. Absolutely. That is so beautiful. And so for people that wonder about this, um, as they call the statistic, which these are human beings, they're not statistics. And, right. uh, we know on the other side of this, abortion is a big business. People make money, mm-hmm. and that's all there is to it. Um, but so people throw around what to them are theoreticals about right. what if somebody's raped, what if somebody's this. Um, what do you say to all of that? And, um, you know, if somebody would be carrying a child that was basically conceived through no choice of their own, um, because you're holding your baby every day and you see what a blessing and what a gift he is and how he's also being used to impact others for people for a woman that's being told that you don't have any hope or um you shouldn't keep this child you've actually been through this so Mm -hmm. if if you could speak into that what what would you say there's a lot of pressure to abort any child who is considered less than ideal, meaning a physical imperfection, a mental imperfection, conceived in less than perfect circumstances, if anything exists. Um, and I, 
I experienced that. I had a lot of support and my husband and some friends. I can't imagine not having that. I know, I, I mean, it's, it's incredibly difficult. The child is not to blame. And the argument being that the child is not to blame. What women are told as rape victims, the child is a reminder. You are not going to be able to move on. You are not going to be able to forget. You are not going to be able to have any kind of life with a constant reminder around. And that's a lie. My son is a reminder of my strength, of God's faithfulness. He's a reminder that good can triumph over evil. He's a reminder that, that there is always light no matter how dark the world can get. So yes, in that way, he's a reminder. I'm not gonna forget what happened to me. Regardless of whether he were here or not, that would not happen. No woman is ever gonna forget that she was assaulted. That's, there's, there's no pill out there that's gonna make that happen. I've talked to a lot, a lot of women who have been raped. Some have kept their babies and some have aborted them. I have never met a woman who has kept their baby and regretted it. I have met a lot of women who are suffering still with the fact that they have aborted their children who were innocent. So they're now suffering from the trauma of the rape, which is a scar that is always with you. Knowing that then they victimized their child in a time when they really weren't at their best to make that kind of decision. And they let someone else force that decision on them. And that happens a lot. So what I would tell women, what I would plead with women is not to let their children, their children, their babies suffer, die for someone else's crime because they have no idea the joy that these children can bring them and or others. They're, if you're not able to emotionally, physically, financially care for this child, there are other people who can and who would love to, I've talked to them as well, who would love to have a baby. And we, we don't have time to get into the, the myth of, you know, thousands and thousands of children languishing, waiting for homes. There are, it's the foster care system, the, the system of adopting children in this country is not perfect. But there are lots of children waiting for homes and there are lots of families who want to adopt. And I would encourage a woman who has been violated in the worst possible way to not let herself be violated again and to not have to live with that regret. I speak from the experience of someone who has been hurt and wounded and is in a place of still recovering, but I can't imagine the pain of not having my son or knowing that I ended his life because I couldn't, because I believed the lies. I believed the lies that it would all be better and it would all be over if I just got rid of him. And I can't, I can't possibly emphasize enough how healing he has been and how much of a gift he has been. And I encourage you with all my heart to just talk to someone who has had a child out of rape. Talk to one of those mothers and and 
listen to her and listen to her experience because I know from my heart and I know from the women who, who've had children from rape that we're not speaking from a position of judgment or hatred or criticism, but of, of love and wanting women, fellow survivors to be healed and to become whole and to be strong. And, and taking the life of your child is, is not the way to do that. And these children are our innocence. And I think are, are given to us to do amazing things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. And so I thank you so much, Jennifer Christie, for being on Mountain Heartbeat with Joe and Rosa today. Thank you, Rosa. That was beautiful. That was great. Thank you for joining us this week on Mountain Heartbeat. That's the conclusion of Rosa's interview with Jen Christie, but if you'd like to hear this and the rest of this interview and other programs, you can find them on soundcloud.com slash Rosa Hopkins or on youtube.com slash Joe and Rosa Hopkins. You can find us online at Joe and Rosa Hopkins, and you can find Rosa's blog at gutsychristianity.com. And I certainly hope you would join us again next week, same channel, same time. And uh, we'll finish it up with a song. This is called trust in Jesus.